so much has happened over the last few days, but as always, I'm Maria Druska. I will tell you about the most interesting news. And of course, we can't start the weekend without Dmitry. I'm definitely not alcoholic medvedi. And as usual, after entertaining alcoholic evenings, Medvedev reacted sharply to the words of the chairwoman of the Bundestag Defense Committee, Marie Agnes Strack Zimmermann, who called on the German government to urgently supply Ukraine with long range Taurus missiles and believes that Ukraine has a right to attack targets in Russia. According to her, with the targeted use of these missiles, the Ukrainian army can seriously disrupt Russian logistics. At the same time, she believes that Kyiv can attack with Taurus targets in Russia itself. International law also allows Ukraine to attack military objects in the territory of the Russian aggressor, regardless of where this weapon was produced and who supplied it. After this, Medvedev stated that in the event of Taurus missile deliveries for strikes on Russia, strikes on the German factories where they are produced would comply with international law. And what I see? Red lines, the Crimean breach, um, nuclear war, strikes on NATO factories, well, yes, British, French and American ones are already destroyed along with a bottle of Finlandia last night. Oh, I also remember that NATO supply corridors were considered a legitimate target, but they chickened out to check whether they really were legitimate or maybe quite not. U.S. President Joe Biden signed a temporary budget that does not include aid to Ukraine. He signed a law continuing government funding for 45 days. The document does not provide aid to Ukraine for this period. If the law had not been signed by midnight on October 1, the U.S. government would have shut down. The signing of the law is reported on the White House website. In an official statement, the president called the law's adoption by Congress good news, as there will be no government shutdown in the U.S. Joe Biden believes that Congress prevented an unnecessary crisis. At the same time, the president expressed hope that Republicans would ensure the possibility of providing assistance to Ukraine because the U.S under no circumstances can afford to have it interrupted. And this is also apparently an American tradition to manage to avoid a shutdown by any means just a few hours before its onset. Representatives from both parties in the U.S. Senate made a joint statement promising to vote for additional funding to assist Ukraine in the coming weeks. Ukraine's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Oleg Nikolenko noted, the situation with the U.S. temporary budget will not stop the flow of, assistant, of assistance to Ukraine. That was announced earlier. Currently, it's about $1.6 billion uh, for defense and $1.23 billion in direct budget support, as well as funds for humanitarian and energy projects. A shutdown of American government could have had a negative impact on the implementation of current programs for Ukraine, he said. Now, the U.S. continues its internal political process, and here I want to thank the American people for their constant support of Ukraine. We can only imagine how many internal state issues you have. Nevertheless, thank you for your interest in us, for speaking about Ukraine, for supporting Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Your support and your country's help is invaluable and we wouldn't be where we are now without your assistance. 
On September 3rd, President Zelensky opened the first International Defense Industry Forum and announced the creation of the Defense Industries Alliance. This is a high-level event of confidential information and sensitive negotiations. Ukraine has developed the relevant foundational declaration for the alliance, and weapon and military equipment manufacturers worldwide Wide that share our country's intent to provide real defense actions against aggressor. The forum was successful, with the president speaking 252 defense companies from over 30 countries, 20 hours of various levels of interactions between Ukrainian and foreign companies. The president's announcement of the Defense Industries Alliance that weapon manufacturers worldwide can join, which 13 leading companies have already signed. The success is undeniable. Ukrainian media Radio Svoboda managed to talk with several representatives of large defense enterprise and ask them about projects shared with Ukraine. Information is taken from their interviews. The CEO of the French defense manufacturer Nexter Group known for its development of the Caesar self-propelled howitzer, which the Ukrainian armed forces are actively using in the war against Russia, say his company has been in Ukraine since the beginning of the war, working closely with the Ukrainian industry, state and private companies helping the Ukrainian army. First and Foremost, we supply various weapon systems, spare parts, and we train Ukrainian military personnel in the technical maintenance and repair of our systems, say CEO of Nexter Group. The French industrialists did not disclose details regarding joint production and the placement of capacities in Ukraine. However, he mentioned that they have signed over 10 agreements with various companies in Ukraine and France concerning cooperation in the field of ammunition, weapons, UAVs, cybersecurity, and so on. The vice president in charge of ground weaponry and anti-aircraft defense of the American company Raytheon, also among the participants of the defense forum, felt safe and comfortable in Kyiv, which is protected by Patriot Systems. The company also supplies the armed forces of Ukraine with NASAMS, Stinger, and Javelin. Among the participants of the International Defense Industry Forum was a representative of Europe's leading missile system manufacturer, the MBDA Group. Among MBDA products is the Storm Shadow missile, which the armed forces of Ukraine uses to target the enemy. Haluk Bayraktar CEO of the Turkish company Baykar Makina, was also a participant of the International Defense Industry Forum. The combat drones of his company Bayraktar TB2 played a significant role at the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. The Baikar Makina drone factory has already begun construction in Ukraine. The Federal Anti-Monopoly Office of Germany allowed the German arms group Rain Metal to create a joint venture with the Ukrainian defense industry, formerly Ukraboronprom. This was announced by the manufacturer's press service on the eve of the forum. It will handle maintenance and production of military equipment in Ukraine, as reported in the publication. Whether the factory will indeed be located in Ukraine, representatives did not answer. It's sensitive information. As a reminder, there were in total 252 defense companies from over 30 countries in the world at the forum. In Moscow, a concert was held in honor of the 
fictitious holiday day of reunification of new regions with the Russian Federation invented by Putin, meaning the day of the capture and illegal annexation of Ukrainian territories. By the way, when a BBC Moscow journalist asked people in line what they were doing there and why they came, not everyone could answer that question, which could, of course, indicate that they were either brought there by force, as, for example, students were made to attend the event, or they were paid. And as is traditional for such events, after the concert ended, one could see Russian flags discarded in the trash bins. Our favorite Dmitry Medvedev has knocked back a few shots again, went on to congratulate everyone in his style and declared that the occupiers will wage war against Ukraine until its complete destruction. The special military operation will continue until the total destruction of the Nazi Kiev regime and the liberation of the inherently Russian territories from the enemy. The former leader of the Russian Federation also hinted that soon Russia will annex even more Ukrainian territories, although he did not specify exactly when. We have heard such fairy tales about Russia is here forever somewhere before, so we continue to believe in our armed forces of Ukraine and wait for our occupied territories to be liberated from the invaders. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as my Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to support the channel, you can send a few coffees to buy me a coffee and become patrons. Links are below. Somehow, today's episode turned out not to be about, you know, quite Ukraine, but about the deep hole called Russia. I simply could not ignore such wonderful economic advice from great sages. A minister in the Ural in Russia advised residents complaining about water to read the Jungle Book. I suggest you reread the Jungle Book. There, even during a disaster, a drought, the animals did not attack each other, replied the Sverdlovsk Minister of Housing and Utilities, Nikolai Smirnov, to the complaints of the city of Pervouralsk residents about the quality of tap water. A resident responded that we are not talking about the jungle, but about the city of Pervouralsk with a population of 120,000 people. Smirnov replied that the cost of water there is about 3 kopecks per liter and suggested comparing this cost with bottled water in the store. Quality directly depends on cost. If you pay hundreds of times less, you shouldn't expect high quality, the minister concluded. So, if you don't have money to buy something good, then take the crap that the government gives you, but don't complain. This is similar to the advice from the Russian Minister of Finance that I wrote about a few days ago on my Twitter. He said that concerning rising inflation in the country, if you don't buy anything, the prices are pretty reasonable. Well, good advice from the ministers. Anyway, just don't participate in the economy of the country and everything will be fine. Ah, that's how they live in Russia. Anyway, see you in my next videos. And Slava Ukraini!